Hello friends. Welcome back to the S3 Cloud Hub YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to see how we can dockerize our existing Flask application. So without any further ado, let's get start the session. So as you can see, this is a very simple Flask application. So basically, we've got our normal app.py. Here we're importing the Flask package. Then we're creating an app. And then we're defining a root and view template. And in this case, our project directory has templates directory that contains the actual HTML code for our index.html. So, guy, this is what the Flask application looks like. And to actually run it, you just hit app.py here. And then here, we are gonna hit run or debug. So now it is running. And now we can confirm that this is working by navigating to the host here, localhost port 5000. And as you can see that, everything's working as we expected to. You can see hello world, and welcome to the S3 Cloud Hub. So now, I'm going to stop this application. And now what we're going to be doing is, we are going to containerizing this into Docker. Now the very first thing you're going to do is, Make sure that you've got a requirements.txt file defined. And in this case, I'm using Flask with version 0.12. And then we're also going to be creating a file called Docker file. You need to make sure that you capitalize that D in the Docker file name, because otherwise this won't run correctly. So what's going on here is basically inside of the Docker file. We're telling Docker how to build this particular container or image that you're building. And so the first thing we're doing is, we're importing the base image which is Alpine, and Alpine's really cool, because it's a lightweight Linux distribution. And so to keep your container small and easily transportable between the computers that you're developing on, in this case works pretty well. We're also going to define the present working directory, as well as copying the contents of everything that's right now inside of our IDE, into this directory in the image. And then we're going to run pip, to actually install all the requirements that we have for our project, which in this case is just Flask. But in your actual project you could have hundreds. And then finally you're defining the command to actually run inside of the Docker container when you're starting it to actually make your Flask turn into a web server. So this is all the code that we're going to have inside of our Docker file. And so the next thing that you're actually going to do here is to create your Flask app. So again let's open the terminal. And here, we're just going to run the command called docker image, then build dash t. And then here, we're going to name this image. So in this case, I'm going to call this docker dash flask dash test. And then here, we need to have space and then period. So once you run this, you'll now see docker begin to actually grab the other docker images it needs and proceed with building your actual image. So we'll let this thing run through. And there we go. So we've got our basic Docker image that's just been built. And so now if we wanted to actually run this image, the first thing we can do is to actually see all the images. So we can run Docker image ls. And we can see that we've got that Docker flash test image that we just created. Next, what we're going to be doing is going to Docker run. Then we are going to define the port with the dash p flag. And here, the first set of characters is defining the port on the host machine that you are going to be allocating to this Docker container. So in this case we're starting the port bindings. 5000 is going to be for this machine that I'm working on. And then the second 5000 is going to be the port on the Docker container itself. So in this case, the Flask application is going to be running on port 5000 of the Docker container. So we're just binding port 5000 on the host to that actual thing on the Docker container. And now, we're also going to do dash D to run this in detached mode so that the terminal is running in a separate window. And then you're going to name the Docker container when it's running. So in this case, I'm just going to call it Docker dash flask dash test. Hit run. And you can see how quickly this thing was able to spin up. And so now, if we go and open up our local host, port 5000, we can see that 
We are now running Flask inside of a Docker container inside of our Windows computer. So that's pretty good. And it makes it a lot easier to ship this container to another computer. So you can develop in a much more easy way. So the other thing we're gonna make note of here is that they basically give you the Docker container id after you've done this. So after you're done playing around, you can copy that. And now what we're gonna do is actually stop this Docker container. So you just run the command docker stop and paste in that id and then that should stop it from running so let's try to see if we can get back to this host or not so you can see that it's now saying that it can't be reached because we've just stopped our docker container and then as best practice when you're using docker after you're done doing everything with your containers it's best to run the command docker system prune to free up all the resources like the volumes and networks so you just do that, hit yes on the keyboard. And so basically, we've just reclaimed some space from the container that we weren't really using. So there you go. So that is how we can take a Flask application, dockerize it, then run it, then stop it, and then prune it afterwards. So with this Docker container, if you have Docker installed on your computer, you can check it and you can run it. So I hope you all guys understood the concept. So guys, that's it for this video, I hope you liked it. I will see you in the next lecture. If you have any question or any doubt, feel free to ask in the comment section below, I will answer you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye and have a nice day.